There are quite a few web interfaces where you can access a large language model. ChatGPT is the best known one, and Google's Bard, Microsoft's Bing, and quite a few others also work well. Let's take a look at how people are using these LLM applications. Whether or not you're already using them regularly, I hope that this will give you some new ideas for when and how they could be useful to you. LLMs are giving a new way to find information. For example, if you ask it what's the capital of South Africa, it may give a response like that. Now, as we'll see later, a LLM can sometimes make facts up. We call this hallucination. And so if you're really relying on getting the right answer to the question, it may be useful to double check the answer with an authoritative source before counting on it. But in this case, it does get the capital or three capitals of South Africa right. And sometimes a back and forth with an LLM is helpful too. For example, if you ask, what does LLM stand for? It might answer, LLM stands for Lagoon Magister, which is a term used in law and is actually a pretty common use of the acronym LLM on the internet. But if you were to then say, what about in the context of AI? Then hopefully it'll say, in the context of AI, an LLM refers to a large language model. So sometimes this back and forth can help you give the right context the LLM to give you the information you're looking for. An LLM can also sometimes be a thought partner to help you think things through. For example, I often use an LLM to help me refine my writing. If you were to tell it, rewrite this for clarity, students all around the world are realizing learning has to happen and so on, leading LLMs are actually pretty good at rewriting text for you. Or here's a fun example. If you were to tell it to write a 300 word story involving trucks, maybe because you have a child that likes trucks like I do, my son loves trucks, but to encourage them to brush their teeth, then leading LLMs can actually create pretty fun and interesting stories. I don't think this is nearly as good as the stories written by the great novelists, but for a quick fun thing, I think it's not bad. Now, there will be times when you're looking for a piece of information and you might be wondering, should I use web search or use an LLM? So if you are playing a sport and unfortunately wound up with a sprained ankle and want to know what to do about it, web search can lead you to pretty authoritative and I think trustworthy sources that can give advice on how to approach medical matters. So for example, web pages from the Mayo Clinic or from Harvard Health, these seem like they would be trustworthy sources for what to do about a sprained ankle. You could also ask an LLM what to do about a sprained ankle and it will generate some answer. But given the propensity of LLMs to make things up and sometimes sound very authoritative and confident, while making things up, I would probably want to double check anything it says about healthcare or medicine before following the suggestions. Here's one more example. If you want to bake a pineapple pie and are looking for a recipe, it turns out there are lots of recipes on the internet for a pineapple pie. And picking one created by a trusted website or a trusted chef, that might get you pretty good results. Or you can ask an OM to make one up for you. And in that case, it'll come up with something that frankly, it might be okay, but also has a high chance of being a somewhat strange recipe. So if you want to bake a pineapple pie, I would probably go find a web page because there are multiple web pages that will give a good solid answer to what's a good pineapple pie recipe. But if you were to look for something more esoteric, say a friend challenges you to make coffee infused pineapple pie, there aren't any web pages that I could find really on coffee infused pineapple pies. And so I don't think there is currently a single web page that gives a good answer to this. And this would be one example where an LM can help be a thought partner to think through how you might go about baking a coffee-infused pineapple pie. So these are just some of the tasks for which you might find the web user interface for an LM useful. We'll explore more examples, discuss strengths and weaknesses of LMs, and go through some best practices later this week. But as you can see from this video, generative AI is capable of many different things. In the next video, we'll more systematically discuss generative AI as a general purpose technology, as well as start to come up with a way to organize all of these things that they can do, which includes writing, reading, and chatting tasks. Let's go take a look at that in the next video.